I want to welcome everybody to this webinar, and I'm delighted that that Brenda Mosby can um, can hear with us and teach us. She's a rehab counselor that I've known for for many years. She's a CCDC board member. Um, she has her own own business helping people um, find be trained and find employment. She's a wealth of information. So um, I will turn it over to Brenda and she can add whatever information and inform us okay. the next hour. Thank you so much, Brenda. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn, for asking me to do this. Um, employment has been my passion for a long time, and specifically for people with disabilities. Welcome, everyone, for being here and sharing this time with me. I believe in, in having fun. I believe that the best way to get information is to um, share it so that I'll be asking some questions and I will also be asking you because one of the things I've learned in the years, and I've been doing this for over 20 years now, and probably the most important thing I have learned is that I learn a lot from others, especially when I'm working with individuals that are job searching, they teach me. So I'm one of those people that I believe I'm the teacher and the student at the same time. So welcome. I want to start with my story because um, some of you may know me and of course some of you may not and I think that I think that it's important for you to know why why did CCDC ask me to share this with you well I think one of the ways to answer that is to start with my story and I will be weaving my story throughout our conversation and you'll understand why when I tell you at the age of 40 and within two weeks I went from 2020 vision to no vision I was blind and as you can imagine with any disability that we acquire it is it is devastating initially because you don't know what to do and I did not know what to do and one of the best kept secrets in this country, I believe, is DVR. I did not know that that existed until I was on a retreat, a spiritual retreat in Kansas City, Missouri, not Jamaica, but in Kansas City. And I met a retired rehabilitation counselor there. And she introduced herself to me and she asked me, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, what can I do? I'm blind. I don't know how blind people work. So she explained to me at that time that the division of vocational rehabilitation, and she explained that they offer services for people with disabilities who want to, who want to go to work. And I said, okay, and she instructed me on what to do when I got back to Colorado. Well, I have to tell you that started my journey to success. It started my journey to um, employment. And it was an uphill battle. It was not the easiest thing to do, but I can tell you that DVR was created to assist us in becoming not only employed, but also to become viable in our community and in our society and in the world. If I learn nothing else, as a person with a disability, I am not second class. As a matter of fact, 
I do what I do. I just do it a little differently, which is actually an asset to the world. I sent um, Angela a statement. Could you read the mission of DVR? Yes. Uh, okay. It's, its mission is to provide vocational rehabilitation, VR, and other services to individuals with disabilities to maximize their employment, independence, and integration into the community and the competitive labor market. I'm going to put it in the chat for you guys. Thank you, Angela. And as you see, it's not just the employment. It's the mission is to make sure we get back into our communities, into society, and that we contribute. Um, another thing I want to just add before I ask some little kind of trivia questions. I have been working since I was 14 years old. My first job was dishwashing. I grew up in a family that when you became of age and 14 seemed to be the age, you got a job. And I'm from a family of eight children, um, seven girls and one guy. And my mother and father taught us the importance of, of working and what it can do. And I'm probably some of you can relate to this. My first paycheck, oh my gosh, I was so excited. Now I had to split it up. One of the things we were taught is 10% went into my savings, 10% went to the family, and then the rest of it went to me. So when I went shopping, bought some pants and a and dress and tops, I was so excited. So I don't know, I didn't know what it was not to work. I just didn't know. And so when this happened to me, the blindness, I was truly lost. As a matter of fact, one of the worst feelings I think a person can have about themselves is feeling worthless. I felt worthless. I felt I couldn't do anything. I felt I would never be in a family. I would never, I would never go to school, nothing because I didn't know. Well, I have to tell you that we're gonna be talking today and maybe some of you will share your story, but I will share my journey because it's a journey that I've had through DVR and, has, and that has allowed me to do things I may not have even done when I was sighted. So let's go to um, some questions. One of the questions, do you know how long, how old the vision of voc rehab um, is? Anyone want to guess? You can unmute yourself if you have an answer, so go right ahead. Um, is it from the um, 1960s? How old would that make it? Um, so that would make it, um, like, let's see, 40, 50, 40? 60, 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Anyone else? I would say 80 years. It's me, Cynthia. 80 years old. Okay. Anyone else? 30 years old. 30 years old? All right. Well, I went to their website to get some information, and what I found out is they are celebrating 100 years. 100 years. And I think this information, this type of information, is important to understand why, you know, how old um, the agency is. Also, we should understand, too, DVR is a success in our federal government. Not all agencies can, can brag about that, but um, the Division of Oak Rehab, you will also hear me say RSA, Rehabilitation Services Administration, RSA. They are the, the agency that is housed in Washington, D.C. 
and they oversee all of the VR agencies in the country. And the VR agencies, as we know, Colorado DVR, are mandated in every state in the union, every state mandated, including the, um, including Puerto Rico. And I had the pleasure last year of meeting um, a woman from Puerto Rico who works with people with disabilities through VR. Here's another question. Why was VR started? This is Kristen from the Colorado Cross Disability Coalition. It was started to get veterans of the First World War back to work. Um, there were a lot of injured men coming back home and the government wanted them to be as able as possible to take care of themselves. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. That is exactly, exactly right. So the so as, as you can see, the mission has always been to help people with disabilities to find employment and to be put back into our society. And I think that is really, um, should I say, that's very admirable that there was a group of individuals 100 years ago who said, we have to do something. We have to do something for our soldiers that are coming back. You know, they're fighting for our freedom. And now they're back here. And so, and I think because of that admiration of doing something so powerful is why it has lasted so long and why it is um, it's such a great agency in our country. Um, so with DVR, I, as I, as I said to you earlier, I went to Kansas City, found out a, a, a retired rehab counselor told me what to do when I got back to Colorado. And she told me to contact DVR and to um, to meet with them so that I can get things started to assist me. Now, when it comes to, just a second, looking. Oh, here we go. I lost my notes. Okay, another thing that I wanted to share with you because I think it, also, it is also important is DVR is funded by the federal government and the state government. 75% of their funding comes from the federal government. And then they require a 25% match from the states. Why is that important? Because it is regulated through the federal government. So DVR, VRs have regulations that they have to abide by um, under the federal government. There are policies and procedures that they write for the state. And I must say that each state runs their VR agency differently. And, but they have to follow the federal mandates from the federal government. And if there's anyone on here that's into regulations and into reading that stuff, then I say it can be interesting reading. I will throw out there um, that one of the agencies that is also mandated, well, let me tell you two agencies that are. Um, that are mandated by the federal government. 
the Client Assistance Program, or CAP as it is called, they, they kind of, they don't oversee VR, but if a, they make sure that the services and programs that are offered through, VD, um, through VR also follow federal guidelines. So they're the ones that clients can talk to if they think they're having any kind of issue with VR. The other one, and I'll talk with you more about it later, is the State Rehabilitation Council. That council was created to be in partnership with VR to ensure, again, that the services and the program are being provided in a um, positive and in, under the regulations. They're there to make sure that clients are, um, are being served correctly. I mentioned those two because they are important for sometimes getting through this process. Um, the other reason that I mentioned to you that it's a federal, under a federal agency, is it is a bureaucracy. It is a bureaucracy. And they do have red tape and all kinds of tape they have to go through. And the VR, Colorado, and I'm gonna stick with Colorado VR, they have to make sure that everything they do follows guidelines. So that's why it's really important that we talk about what is their responsibility, but then again, it's important to talk about what is our responsibility as clients. Okay, so when you go to the, when you go to DVR, one thing to remember, they can only serve individuals with disabilities. That is a mandate from the federal government. That is why they were set up. What does that mean? That means that you have to have documentation of your disability to work with VR. Um, some of the good news is if you feel that you have a disability for some reason and you but you don't have documentation you can go to the division of voc rehab tell them your experience what you're experiencing and they can send you to a doctor for documentation and it would be they would pick up the cost the cost of that and I want to put that out there because if anyone is hesitating, but they know that they have been suffering from depression or they have been um, unable to use their arm. And, and sometimes we may not know what is considered a disability. We may not know that. But if you go to D DVR, that is what they are there to do, is to help you make that determination. And what also happens is they can also learn what will, it, what will they need to do to assist you with going into employment. Um, an example, when I went there, when I went to DVR, I was, of course, I share with you, I'm blind. And I had documentation because I had, um, I'd only been blind about a year. No, actually I'd been blind about three years, but um, I did have some documentation that I sent to them. And, and so when I went in as a person with blindness, they had um, they had me meet with a counselor, and I want to share this, and then I want to unmute and see if anyone has any questions about what I've said so far. When I went in to meet with my the counselor for the first time, it was very scary, and I didn't know what to expect. I did not know what to do. As I said, I was forty years old. 
and my mother came with me. I want to encourage individuals who go and meet with their counselors. If you feel that you want an advocate or you want your parent or you want your sibling or your neighbor who you know supports you, they can go to your meetings with you. That is in the law that you can bring support to these meetings. And it really helped me when I went there with my mom and because I did not know until I left that meeting with my mother and when we got in the car, she said to me, did you know that counselor was blind? And I said, no. And that really encouraged me to do what I've been able to do over these next few years. Let's stop for a minute and see if there's some questions on what I've said so far. Any questions? None? All right. Are we, anybody? Somebody wrote in a question on okay. the chat. Hey, that was me, Brenda. This is Cindy Stevens. Nice to hear your presentation. Thanks so much. Um, you mentioned the State Rehab Council. What was the name of the other organization for assistance? Client Assistance Program or CAP. Oh, okay, like disability law, those folks that are designated by DVR. Thank you. You're welcome. April? April, are you still there? I was, I'm sorry you interrupted, but you had a question? There was, oh no, it was in the uh, chat. Oh, can you read it? That's the one you just answered, so. Oh, okay, that was April, okay. All right, thank you, Angela. Okay, so what are, what are the services? that can you can get at DVR? Well, the truth is I could not in a million years go over all of the services that um, DVR offers because they have a whole fee schedule that is on their website and you can go through that fee schedule and you can see all the services that they offer they break them down into chapters i know there's a chapter on medical equipment they can help individuals with medical equipment um there is um in, in blindness when i went there they helped me to receive a white cane they helped me to um there were some glasses that at that time um, help me. So what they can offer as services is dependent upon your individual needs, your individual needs. Now, one of the things that will happen, and before they can offer any type of services to you, you have to develop what's called an individual plan for employment. Why this is very, very important to know and why the word individual is important. People can have the same disability and have different individual plans for employment. And I'm gonna start calling them IPE. We call them IPE. So I know that as a person who's, who's worked in employment for quite a while, I've heard situations where one individual says, well, I'm blind, and but so-and-so got this. How come I can't have that? Because those plans are all individually written. The other thing that's important to know is you should be one 
percent involved in writing your plan. 100%. No counselor should be writing the plan alone and then giving it to you. Because one, another thing that's important, you have to sign that plan. That plan is a contract between you and DVR. So you should have 100% participation. In the regulations, in the federal regulation, it talks about informed choice. That is something they put in later, but they found it very, very important. All clients of DVR, no matter where they are in the country, should be informed about what they need and what they're going to be doing to get through this process. I will, I wanna share a situation that happened to me. Um, first, let me tell you, when I went into DVR and I met with the counselor, and I really didn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what I could do. So how could I know what I wanted to do? So one of the first things they did is they helped me to acquire the skills of a blind person. And that included learning how to use a computer with voice. That included learning mobility skills so I could travel the city so I could get to work and back, so I could get on buses and trains. That included me taking computer lessons. And it also, what's probably, now that I think about it, probably the most important thing it did is it made me start to feel that I wasn't worthless that maybe there was something that I can do. Maybe I could go back to work, but I just had to do it a little differently. Well, actually it turned out a lot differently. But that is part of what the mission of DVR is. That is to put us back into society. And what I found is when I started to acquire these assets, I also realized that I was, I was able to contribute to, to others, to my family, to my friends, even to my employer. So once you, once you get the training that you need, and that has no time limit on it. It, de it truly depends on the individual. And so, as I was saying, how important it is to be informed with everything that happens to you. Now, if you know of individuals that need assistance working with a counselor, they can actually have what is called a release form. And that release form is signed by the client and signed by the person who will be assisting the client and the counselor. And that allows someone to go in with them. Because there are individuals that may not be able to speak up for themselves. That doesn't mean they don't get the same type of service the same courtesy, the same respect from a counselor. And that is very important. That when you go in and you work with the counselor, that you feel respected. You feel the counselor hears you and you feel that the counselor is working with you. That's the responsibility of the counselor to do that for any and every client that comes in. It is the duty of the counselor 
to make sure you're always informed with any changes that might happen that affects your IPE, that affects what you need to do <laughs> to move toward to move toward employment. So I want to talk about what's our responsibility? What's our responsibility? Because remember, I shared with you that you have to have an IPE. And that IPE has to be in place and signed before any services can start for you. Well, let me back up. That's not completely true. There are some services that can be done to determine to determine what to put in your plan. Example, I did not know, I didn't have any computer skills when I started with DVR. So they sent me for an assessment with a vendor to see what skills I needed for employment. That was done before the plan was signed because they needed that information to go into the plan. And it was determined when I went for that assessment that what we put into the plan was computer training. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions with that? Okay, so, um, and this information is the beginning of having a successful journey with DVR. And I'm gonna call it a journey because it's, it's up and down and, and it feels like one. But I tell you, it can be a good journey. Um, there are some things that can happen that may feel frustrating. And it may feel like, you no, know, they're not doing what I want. <laughs> Sorry, I got some. So as I was saying, these are, <clears throat> this is important information because this is what will start your, okay, this is what will start your, um, the process for you getting through DVR. Um, it will be the beginning of, the process of the um, the process that you'll be going through. A so as I said with me, I actually did the training. I also want to to share and um, I, I want to stop for a minute. And this is kind of to Dawn and, and Angela. Um, there's really no way that I can give as all the information that I need um, within an hour. Will we be able to schedule other series from this? Uh, that's Dawn, but I'm going to say absolutely. <laughs> she can correct me if I'm wrong. But. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have, I believe, seven more weeks of stay at home. So um, we can talk after the session about continuing this. Thank you. Um, I needed to say that because I needed to say that because I can't give you know keep people all the information that could really help them to make have a successful um, DVR um, program. And I would love to do this over series. So let me get back. So let me get back to what I was sharing with you because this is important. Um, like I said, the, what you do in the beginning. Another thing that you can do in the beginning of the program, the initial, is to if you have an idea 
of what type of employment you want. And that means if you think that you want to work for someone or you want to be self-employed. If you know that you will need a college degree to get to where you want to go for employment, if you know that you're gonna need certifications, if you can do that research before you go to talk to a counselor, they will appreciate that. And that is because the more the two of you work together, the better your outcome will become. And those are the services that Colorado DVR does offer. They, besides employment, they also offer self-employment. So if you know that you have something or you truly feel that you have something that you can produce or a service that you have that could um, support you, and that's an important term, that can support you, not be a hobby, but be something that you know, will be an income for you, you can take that into your conversation with the counselor. If you know that, for example, I made a decision to become a rehabilitation counselor, a rehab counselor, I had to get a college degree. Not only did I have to get a bachelor's degree, it's required for a rehabilitation counselor to have a master's degree. Because it's required, DVR is mandated to pay for my master's. That, does, that is not across the board. That does not mean if you go into a field and that they have to pay for the bachelor's and the master. It has to be required in the job description. And the Division of Voc Rehab cannot hire anyone who doesn't have a master. Other fields are not like that. If you go into IT, you go into IT, technology, at this time, a bachelor's would probably suffice you getting employment. So a master's would not be required. DVR would not be required to pay for that. Any questions around that? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Okay, so, so one step that you can do before you even go into that office to meet with that counselor is you can talk to a career counselor like myself. I'm a vocational counselor in a, my, my private business, Mosby Employment Services. You can call the school, college, you can call a vocational college. You can talk to, let's say I have friends that go into massage. <clears throat> That's a viable field for employment. You can do some of that research before you go in to talk to the counselor. What that does is that tells the counselor, one, you're committed to your employment and what you want to accomplish. And two, that you are willing to do what it takes, which includes researching what you need to do to get into that field. It could be also that you acquired your disability after working for 10 years or 20 years, and you want to get back into the field. You love the field, and you feel you can still do the field. You can talk to your counselor about that. So one of the first steps, one of the first steps in preparing to have a, a good relationship with the counselor and a good experience with, with DVR is inform yourself. 
Inform yourself. Um, the other thing that I and I'm, then I'm going to ask and see if my partner is on the on the phone. But I think it's important that you even research VRs. Go to the website. Go to Colorado um, DVR's website. See what information they have on there. Um, see what they're saying. I mentioned to you earlier that they have the fee schedule on there. That's going to let you know some of the things that they can purchase. Um, one thing that can that is helpful for some individuals before they get started or when they um, get started with DVR, there's a thing called situational assessment. And what that does is if an individual comes into the office and says, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in this, in this field and I'm not sure I can do it, DVR could find an employer or their, one of their vendors could find an employer that would let you come in and see a call it situational because you would go in and you can see can i do this situation now can i perform these duties it also may tell you how can i perform these duties with my disability one of the first things with me one of the scariest things was when i went back to work and I wasn't sure what I could do. I had one experience that I went to work for this rec. It was at uh, Metro State College, and I was working in the recreational department. And I was working with clients, and I was greeting clients, and I was helping them to exercise. But there was a, there was a duty that they gave everyone to do, and that was filing, filing papers. Instead of telling my employer, my supervisor, I, this was a struggle for me, I tried to do it and I failed and I got angry and I took that anger out on my coworkers, my supervisor. Luckily, I had a supervisor who had gotten to know me and we sat down and we talked and she said, what's wrong? And I told her, she said, Okay, let's change your duties. A situational assessment will help you determine what assistive technology you might need, what supports you might need. And this is just at the beginning. And that's why I'm so glad Angela and Don were saying that they want a series because there's other steps beyond this, but I don't want to go too far. And I do want to check to see if Bill Estrada is on the phone. Hold on, let me look. Hey, down. Brenda, this is Bill. Is. I just got on. Okay, thank you, thank you. I want to. I actually want to stop here because I think there's information that Bill, Bill, and I want to share with you about employment right now i bet some of you on the line you know on the zoom might be interested in some possibilities of employment right now we have just one area that we want to share with you that we have um, bill has actually seen a client um, get employment and that is online jobs and I want Bill to share with you the website that he uses that talks about website, online jobs, full and part-time. Bill? Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. This is kind of a crazy mess we're in, but we got to move forward and do what we can do. Um, briefly, for work at home situations right now, there's quite a bit going on because of the lockdown and everything else that's going on. 
there's pharmacies, there's pickup companies, there's rideshare organizations. A lot of people are looking for work from home. A lot of places are looking for workers from work from home. One of the main web pages that we use and that we post our job leads uh, for our current clients is called ratracerebellion.com. If you want that specifically or you want to send me additional questions about that or get on our email list, you can always email me directly at jobs at team, that's T-E-A-M-E-E-I dot O-R-G. Um, if you have a computer, good computer skills, and you're ready to roll, there are several companies that CBS Pharmacy just came out today, said they're hiring 500 people immediately to help fill the online needs for their customers calling in. There have been some local companies doing it as well. So there's quite a bit out there. Some of them are stating temporary, just during um, you know, all the limitations that are out there. Some of them are saying that they could roll over into permanent employment after all this is done. So it just depends on what you wanna do, how you wanna do it, and if you feel that you're ready to do it. If you haven't worked for a while, you might wanna reconsider things. And I got on the call when Brenda was talking about the situational assessments and things. That's a good place to start to test your skills, your abilities, and your stamina for your current situation. What else, Brenda? I put both of those links in the chat boxes, you guys. And I confirmed my spelling, so I did get it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Angela. Thank you. I am showing. I'm showing ten minutes um, until we finish, and I want to encourage um, those that are on the line. Um, no question is silly. No question, you know, is stupid. Um, if you if you're thinking of anything and you want to ask it now you are welcome to. I have given Dawn and, and Angela permission to give out my, my email and you can email me and we can set up a time to talk um, if you would like. And so I'm just, I'm gonna open up right now to see is there anyone have any questions at all? Hello, it's me, Cynthia Coffin. Hi, Cynthia. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> I have a quick question. Um, I have heard that visual services will pay for college beyond the bachelor's degree, but the regular DVR will not pay for on the bachelor's degree. Is that true? Who will pay for it? Um, so, Department of Book, we have visual services blind and low vision will pay for a master's degree but okay. regular DVR if you don't have, if you're not blind like if you're in the regular division um, straight DVR will not pay for beyond a bachelor's degree is that true okay here's the here's the answer to that it depends it depends um, you cannot say across the board that DVR pays for masters. No matter what disability you have, if it's blindness or if it's mental health or if it's um, any of those, it depends on your employment goal. If your employment goal requires for you to get a job in the field, and they require a master's, then you can talk to DVR about paying for your master's program. But there cannot be a blanket statement that DVR pays for master's. And it's, you definitely cannot say that DVR plays, pays for master's for this group and not for that group. It will totally depend on each individual and their employment goal. Does that, does that help and does that make sense, Cynthia? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. Anyone else? Well, I'm going to put in a little plug because I'm going to say, tell your friends about the series that is going on. It is going to get even more interesting than it is. I will be sharing my journey through DVR. And I can tell you that it's been up and down. I've had my battles with counselors and administrators of DVR, but I can say I have had success with the program. It did, it definitely helped that I went and got my master's in rehabilitation counseling. So I have the same degree that the counselors have. So sometimes when we talk, it's like, you know, um, we are colleagues. Um, that does help. But to get to that point, I had a journey through DVR. And I know that DVR can work for individuals. Probably the, the, what I'll talk more about in our next series is the responsibility of the client. There are responsibilities that you have to hold up that we have to hold up in our contract with DVR. Remember what I said, the plan, the IPE, the Individual Plan for Employment, is a contract between you and DVR. And everybody has to hold up their side of that contract. And I would like to talk more about that because I have seen situations on both sides. And if you, if you have an idea, and I also say to you that there are counselors at DVR who can help you come up with your employment goal. That's what they were trained to do. Those, those are the things that they will help you with. So I'm going to Don, Angela, are there any any statements that you want to make or share? Thank you so much, Brenda. Um, I I really appreciate you sharing with us what you know and please everyone look out for when we continue this series in the next week or two. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to just add on there that we, if you'll just, if you go to our website on the front page, it's just ccdconline.org. And there's a link to our, um, our main sort of launch page for everything having to do with the uh, pandemic. If you click on virtual events, there is an entire slew, I guess, is that a technical word? A slew of events available <laughs> throughout the week um, that we're looking forward to seeing uh, where they go. Everything from, you know, coffee and conversations on Saturday to nightcaps and chats to uh, outvote and uh, training with regional organizing. So lots and lots of variety there. So take a look and um, we'll, uh, we'll post the next one uh, that Brenda does in the series as soon as we've settled on a date and time. And I want to thank, I just want to take a minute to thank Bill Estrada, who is the president of Team EEI. He has been working with the Division of Oak Rehab for over 20 years. He has valuable, valuable um, information to, to share. I'm hoping I can talk him into um, joining me on um, some of these other series um, that, that we will be having. Thank you, Brenda, and for everybody who's, who showed up, please spread the word about this series, and we will send out the next time and date. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.